Hello, my name is Cam Rosen, cannabis nurse at Hay Day Clinic, and I'm joined today by Dr. Jim Connell, also from Hay Day Clinic, and today we're going to be speaking about smoking versus vaporizing cannabis. Now, while we are going to be talking about medicinally prescribed cannabis today, we also know that there may be some adult use or self-medicators watching, and whilst we are not here to promote the consumption of cannabis for any reason, that is for you and your doctor to decide, um, from a healthcare perspective, it is one of our goals to try and convert uh, people that are smoking over to utilizing a vaporizer. Um, So in addition to that, Dr. Jim and I will cover uh, what is a dry herb vaporizer, um, what is vaping in relation to medicinal cannabis, the legalities of smoking versus vaping medicinal cannabis in Australia, the downsides of smoking, and why cannabis is uh, significantly better when utilized through a vaporizer. So, Dr. Jim, what is a vaporizer? Thank you, Cam. Uh, That was a great introduction. So, Vaping or, or using a vaporizer is, is something that has been in the, in the media. So I think it's very uh, important that we clarify exactly what dry herb vaporization is and why it is superior to smoking as well, because there are forms of vaping that do, could potentially carry their own issues, but that's not what we're talking about here today. So a dry herb vaporizer is a device that has a chamber where you put your plant material in, that heats it to a set temperature, and instead of burning that plant material, it releases the oils as a vapor. So all that you're getting are the active, the bioactive constituents that you want. So the cannabinoids, the, the terpenes, um, and, so, and and other sort of beneficial compounds. The different dry herb vaporizers that are out there, they're, they're two different types. There's a convection and there's a conduction type sort of vaporizer. The best quality devices are convection devices and what they do is they pass hot air through this chamber so that the plant material is heated evenly and you get um, even activation and good quality vapor from that experience the conduction devices they have a heating element and the plant material closest to that gets heated first and at higher temperatures Uh, the i guess the difference between the two is that the convection devices because of the the technology required are often bigger and bulkier and more expensive and the um, conduction sort of devices, they're, they're smaller, more discreet, and generally sort of cheaper. So that, that's the, the difference between the vaporizers. But look, when a lot of people think of vaping, they think of um, vape pens, vape cartridges. And this is very different to dry herb vaporization. So those vape pens, and people have probably heard of, of barley, they can carry their sort of own risks. So what that is, is a, is a resin, a plant resin that's been mixed with a solvent. Often it's a thing like propylene glycol or vegetable glycerin. And then with other additives put there to try and improve the experience of those vape pens that can potentially be harmful. So things like with the Avali outbreak, which was which means e-cigarette and vape associated lung injury, people were getting a lot of damage to their lungs. And the constituents that were causing that were things like vitamin E acetate. Um, they found things like squalene, which is a type of terpene. That, that can break down into other harmful sort of chemicals. And also people were inhaling the wrong types of fats. So they're actually getting lipid accumulation within their lungs, forming a certain type of pneumonia. Um, as well as that, a lot of those vape pens, they have poor heating elements or metals that can actually leach into the, the plant material, I mean, into the actual um, solution, which can lead to further, further harm. And they often weren't, actually vaporization sort of devices. So the heating elements would get too hot and they would actually be causing combustion. So people are inhaling the burnt constituents of of this sort of solvent solution. So when we're talking about vaporization, we are very much talking about a dry herb vaporizer, which is very different to an electronic vape pen or a concentrate sort of pen as well. So I think it's really important that we get that out. I think for sure, um, especially considering how many uh, vape pens you do see on the streets nowadays, uh, they are not to be confused. The dry herb vaporizer is completely different. Now, uh, are there any kind of legal requirements around smoking versus vaping medicinal cannabis in Australia? So when someone is prescribed whole flour, it is prescribed for vaporization. It is not prescribed for smoking. The TGA clearly states that these products are only there for use in a in a whole, in a, a whole plant um, vaporizer. So it is not legal, according to the reason you've been prescribed these, to smoke um, medical cannabis. So 
smoking it through a joint or, or a bong or a pipe, anything like that is actually not as that medicine was intended to be used. So then we come down to actually the devices themselves, and there are only a couple of approved devices out there on the market. And the two that are out there are the Mighty Medic and the Volcano. So the Mighty Medic being a portable um, convection dry herb vaporizer and the Volcano being a desktop um, convection vaporizer as well. So they are the only two that are approved for medical use, but there are other devices that can be applied for through the TGA. So doing the same thing like other, other medical cannabis products, doing an application through the SASB or some other conduction devices that have been shown to be good, good quality, but may, may not be the same standard as those other convection devices. But one of the issues with those high quality devices is the cost and they are, and they are costly and they are an expense that people need to pay up front. So the Mighty Medic is around you know, 400 to $500 and the Volcano device is, is even more, but they're such good quality that they will last for a very long time and they are very efficient in using that product as well. So what you spend up front, you'll generally make back quite quickly if you're using flour as a regular form of um, medicating with medical cannabis. Now, with, with these vaporizers, um, we've, we've mentioned the two medically approved vaporizers. Are there any risks with some of these um, other vaporizers that are out there? Yeah, so de def definitely there, there are, because this is something we're using medically. So we need to make sure that the device itself doesn't have potential um, toxins or, or, or components within their, their manufacturing that can actually get into the, the flower. Because if that happens, if it's leaching sort of metal or plastics or, you know, battery acid or whatever it might be, and it gets into the flower and you inhale it, then that's going to obviously cause a lot of damage to, damage to the lungs. So we need to make sure that it's good quality, that it's manufactured by, you know, reliable manufacturing sort of um, processes, that they're only using sort of safe things like ceramic in the chamber and all these types of things to, to get that medical experience. Okay, thank you for that. Now, when it comes to smoking cannabis, we're going to get onto the benefits of vaporizing, but first let's, uh, let's explore why smoking cannabis may be an undesirable option, so to speak. So, so obviously the first thing we think about um, when inhaling smoke is the potential for respiratory damage. So all smoke, doesn't matter what form it comes from, whether it comes from the fire, whether it comes from a, from a, from a cooker, all smoke is potentially damaging to the lungs and comes with uh, is harmful, harmful sort of chemicals. So smoke itself is potentially bad. In regards to cannabis smoke, it has been shown that users who use cannabis and cannabis only, who inhale it by smoking, it does cause bronchial irritation. It can cause increased mucus production. You get damage to the cilia, which are the little hair cells within the lungs, which means that you can't clear that mucus properly. So you are more likely to have chronic cough and be more likely to develop pneumonia. But they have shown with people who use cannabis and cannabis only that it doesn't seem to cause a significant increased risk of permanent damage to the lungs. So there doesn't seem to be a correlation with increased rates of COPD or the development of lung cancer. Actually, in regards to COPD, they did a retrospective um, study that looked at hospitalized COPD patients, and those who had been using cannabis actually had longer duration of stay within hospital and lower mortality as well. So there are some protective factors in regards to um, cannabis, uh, cannabis via the inhaled route. I won't say cannabis smoke, because obviously a vaporizer is gonna be better. Another issue with smoking cannabis is a lot of people who use cannabis in that form don't just smoke cannabis by itself. They'll mix it with tobacco or spin it with tobacco. And the tobacco itself, as we know, is, is very harmful. So if someone is using cannabis with tobacco and they're smoking it, then the smoke will actually damage those lungs further, lead to sort of further DNA damage, leading to destruction of of, of the lung and also you know increasing the risk of cancer as well as actually having that addiction potential as well so people will start getting cravings around you needing to you know to smoke cannabis but really what they're getting the cravings around is actually the the need to smoke some extra sort of nicotine nicotine mm. 
And then there are people out there who are smoking cannabis and they think, well, the way that I'm smoking is actually a safer alternative than, than others. So people use a water pipe, a bubbler or a, or a bong, and they think because it's filtered through the water itself, then it's filtering out some of those harmful chemicals. But actually there has been a recent study that's shown that the filtration is more of the cannabinoids and other beneficial components. It doesn't actually filter out any of the harmful toxins. So when that actually gets into the lungs, there's a, a disproportionate sort of amount of harmful chemicals versus protective sort of um, components from, from the cannabis plant. When you smoke cannabis as well, it's not just the, the damage that it can do, that smoke can do to your lungs, it's the loss of other beneficial components within, within the cannabis plant as well. So when you burn something, it undergoes pyrolysis, and the temperatures that happen at, at the end of the joint or at the bong are much higher than is necessary to activate your medicine. And, and in fact, it actually incinerates a lot of the medical components of the cannabis plant. So you incinerate a lot of those terpenes, which are vol volatile sort of terpenes. You will activate the cannabinoids, but you'll also just burn a lot of them and they'll go up in smoke. And I think you lose about 30% of your cannabinoids when when you're burning that sort of plant material, when you when you actually smoking cannabis so as you see there's big clouds of smoke that is just a loss of medicine so there's there's a lot of different reasons why you you don't want to be smoking your, your cannabis as well as just the fact that it's it's often very smelly you know so you can smell the smoke on people it's indiscreet you know so if, if the, the smell is is obvious because all of that medicine is just getting sort of going, going out into the air and it's inefficient as well. So you, you're wasting wasting money as, as well as actually wasting the, the medicine that you've been prescribed. Mm, thank you for that. And now what are some of the benefits that we can get from vaporizing cannabis instead of smoking it? Yeah, so there are a lot of benefits you can get from, get from vaping. So you still get the rapid onset when you're using the dry herb vaporizer. So you're still getting that same instantaneous relief. So that side, the quality of experience is, is, is definitely there. Because you're, you know, activating this medicine at lower temperatures, you're not getting the release of all of these other polyaromatic hydrocarbons and other potential sort of irritants. It's a smoother experience. You're better able to hold it in your lungs for an adequate amount of time, which increases the bioavailability, so the effectiveness of, of the medicine. So I think that's an, an important aspect. Because you can change the temperature with your vaporization device, it's not a set temperature, you can choose uh, uh, choose the actual sort of terpenes or compounds you're trying to activate when you when you set that sort of temperature. So look, you're the you're the terpene terpene expert, but generally the more volatile terpenes, the monoterpenes have a lower boiling point and they're the ones that are more energizing mm. and uplifting. So if you set it at a lower temperature, say, you know, one, 160 to 180 sort of degrees, then you're more likely to get a more energizing, um, uplifting sort of experience. And then if you set it at those higher temperatures, you're more likely to get an increased amount of the um, more complex sort of terpenes, the ones that are probably better for sedation and, and analgesia. So you can change your experience based on the temperature. And you can also select certain chemo bars or, or strains and get the best out of them by having an understanding of their terpene profile and then changing your temperature to change that experience as well. And that means you can set goals, uh, you know, functional goals throughout throughout the day and really sort of dial, dial in with those. So what is your intention in regards to medicating? Why, why are you using this medicine? And you can make sure that you actually can, can reach those sort of goals. So you get this control, you get this precision, and you get less temptation to overindulge as well because, you know, if someone is smoking a joint or a bong, they generally finish hmm. what is what is there. It's hard to pick up and put put down. And therefore, you go past your therapeutic window. You're not at your optimum dose. You're impaired. You're intoxicated to the point where you can't actually engage in any other health-promoting activities, and that's not what, what we're sort of aiming for. So you want to be able to set those intentions. You want to be able to meet those functioning, functional goals. And then it is much easier to use if you – Go, go somewhere um, as as well. You know you don't need a lighter. You've just got to have a charge charge device. You can turn it on. You can turn it off. You can only use it as as, as much or as little as, as you need throughout throughout that as well. And it doesn't smell. 
and it doesn't smell. What doesn't smell anywhere near as much. Yeah. All right. So um, some of the key takeaways, I'll leave this to you, but overall we have, um, it's a more cost effective way of utilizing your medicine. You get to activate uh, all of the constituents within the plant rather than incinerating them. As you said, um, it uh, smells nicer. It's more discreet. It's uh, less of an irritant on your lungs. We're not inhaling any kind of harmful byproducts that are occurring through that um, degradation process. Um, uh, we are less likely to overindulge, easier to set intentions, and be more deliberate with your application of this medicine. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a that's a good good summary there. So there are many many reasons to use a dry herb vaporizer. There's not any reason I can think of against it apart from the the cost of the initial outlay. But like I said, the efficiency of use you make that back, you know, so quickly. So definitely worth getting out there, trying a vaporizer. I have many patients who have been self-medicating for, for many years who were very skeptical about going to a vaporizer, but now that they have, it has changed their experience so greatly and they will never, ever go back to, to smoking cannabis. They've started looking down on people that, 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 <laughs> that smoke, that smoke, <laughs> smoke, smoke cannabis and they're, and they're out there sort of, you know, telling everyone about, about these sort of devices. So give it a go. It is a different experience. So if you are, you know, if, if they have been used to smoking, it might take, you know, a week or two to become accustomed to this difference. But give it a go, persevere, have a play around, and you'll be able to dial into a much better experience and actually get more out of your medicine. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Ken.